疲れた疲れた疲れた疲れた疲れた疲れた疲れた死ぬほど疲れた疲れた疲れたほんの疲れた疲れた疲れて疲れ果ててた疲れたマジで疲れた Welcome to Hentai and Philosophy, or Philosophy in Hentai, where I talk about philosophy and how that somehow relates to porn. That features a story because that one philosophy video I did on Metamorphosis by Fchindo L a year ago blew up. And to celebrate that video blowing up, there's this video this year before next year, which is going to be 2020. So if you're not prepared to hear some morally incorrectness and some degeneracy combined with some analytical philosophy psycho babble, you have been warned. So what we're looking at here is Ura Count Joshi, which is honestly a carbon copy of Metamorphosis by Shindo L. However, it's connected to a interconnected hentai universe. Featuring a variety of characters having their own story arcs, and the story arc we'll be taking a look at today is called Kuramato Satsuki, or the case of Kuramato Satsuki, because that's what it's officially called. Now, before I say anything about the nature of the content presented in this book, this video will naturally be heavily centered. It's also best for me to say that Satsuki san gets no empathy from me because Satsuki san is a hoe and she's a whore too, and her mother was a whore, and her mother and her father used to turn tricks at a 7 Eleven because. Guess what? He's a whore too. And that's literally the theme of the entire story, besides this meta analysis on social media, namely Instagram. But in all seriousness, this story revolves around the theme of kinophobia, in Latin also called as hora vaci, which translated into English is translated into the fear of emptiness. Now, it's important to understand this is not a philosophical point of view, however, a psychological state of mind that devoids a person of value and meaning, where you'd use a crutch to fill up the void with meaning. Hence, creating an addiction. Now, when I refer to the word void, I'm referring to the emptiness a person might possibly feel inside of them. Imagine this as a metaphorical hole where your heart should be. But to further elaborate on addiction, this could possibly lead someone down a path of self distraction or lack of meaning or discovery of a lack of meaning in someone because addictions are simply quick fixes to fill up those voids affecting a person's psychological state of mind and social life. And this is not an active choice, but more of a behavior requirement and due to the nature of human nature. Nature, we do these things because it's our nature to want to be happy and fulfilled, but can't because of fear, or more precisely, the fear of emptiness. A lot of this won't make sense immediately. However, when I go throughout the book and begin to explain the narrative, explaining the literary terms that are being used and how the characters and the dialogue are cooperating with one another hand in hand, a lot of this will make a lot more sense. But to give a definitive example in relation to this book, the main character uses sex and websites and her online diary to post sexually explicit photos of herself online and then some other videos for validation and some sense of value that she derives from doing this and the people that have the insight and view of her life. This is because she is a social outcast and because socially people have rejected her, she went to another community where people are more validating of her and accepting of her and who she is, meaning that. These people need her as just as much as she needs them. However, this works as a one way relationship and there is a strong tie to emotional codependency. This is brought to its extremis when she cannot exist without being an e girl and a prostitute because she needs people, but the people don't need her as much as she needs them. Like I said earlier, a lot of this won't make sense to you immediately. However, when I go throughout the book panel by panel and page by page, a lot of it will be blatantly apparent. But to summarize it in short, Due to the very fact that she doesn't receive the love and affection that she's supposed to have from her parents and the rejection she constantly faces and receives at school, in combination with an absent teen father, she does what she does because she wants to be loved and accepted by people, but that can't possibly happen when she views herself as a commodity and not an actual human being. To reiterate again and not using the logic of the fictitious nature of this fictional book, an example of this in real life is basically watching porn. It's something people naturally do to subside their sexual. Urges if they don't have anyone to leash it on to, but it's also something someone can get addicted to if they're lonely or use porn as a crutch because of their past failed relationships and bailing social circles. Or someone could have the fear of being in a relationship with someone else to even some possibly feeling inadequate or they lack value in themselves to be worthy of someone else, so you'd watch porn to make yourself feel good because life is about trying to live life happily, and at times you gotta do what you gotta do to get that. 
that dopamine boost somehow, but addiction and behavioral changes are also linked to loneliness, meaning someone literally not having anything else to do, so they do what they do, let that be smoking, because they have nothing else better to do. So, to fill the void of that loneliness they feel, they do what they do, that addiction. Hence, the fear of emptiness. They do what they do, because they feel empty. Smoking, checking your phone, drugs, etc, etc. That all stems from the fear of emptiness. Now for those that believe this sounds like nonsense, let me ask you a philosophical question but phrase it as another example. So if you were just sitting in a room and don't do anything for an extended period of time, let that be 30 minutes to an hour, you will notice this fear of emptiness come up within you or a feeling of emptiness and that you need or want or have a strong craving to do something. And whatever it is, could you not do it? Could you sit or stand idly by and simply allow the world and time to just pass you by. Promptly the world is full of distractions and we use technology and everything that we have as a civilization to escape from this existential emptiness of fear that we all have inside of us. It's why we have so much stuff, it's why we are all somewhat hedonistic and somewhat incredible narcissists. To phrase this loosely philosophically, you can't really be satisfied in life if you can't sit alone in an empty room with your own thoughts for a couple of hours without wanting or craving something and most people can't do that because fundamentally life is hollow and there are so many distractions in the world now compared to the middle ages and to add further existential nihilistic dread life is actually empty but us as a people as a society have been running away from that truth and reality for most of our lives because it's what humans do we fill our lives with stuff and add all these layers and rules to add meaning to it through laws and entertainment and music and social media and whatever new bullshit there is out there to try to escape from the rules and laws that we created within our own society which is our mundane lives. So how do we conquer the emptiness of the void that's within us all? Well, you can walk around it and pretend it's not there and smile and skip around all happy like or you can do what this book suggests. Nothing which isn't advised, but Sasuke-san isn't exactly the role model anyone wants to be imitating. Therefore, you literally can't do anything about it, because the only thing to stop it is death, not killing yourself per se, but the very end of your existence, meaning that you'd have to view everything from an end's point of view, or a fatalistic point of view. I.e., though I'm 20 years old, I will die approximately 80 to 60 years from now, so while I'm here, I might as well get mined and make the most out of it. But this is also expanded from greed and stereotypes typical notions of hedonism and as a fitical thought about existence, from asking questions about what happens when you die, to satirical and cynical beauty of death itself, to lie on the earth with grasses waving over your head, and to be at peace with nothingness, thus returning from where once you came, from nothing, but simultaneously what makes life so beautiful is that we are lucky for just existing at all because that could have easily not be the case. So keeping that in mind, what does this hentai want people to do to overcome the fear of emptiness and overcome addiction and a selfish self-pitying lifestyle other than stroking themselves while looking at some pictures of a fictional character that don't exist because it's a cartoon if that's what you're into. <laughs> Personally for me I know some people out there are looking for some nasty stuff but me I'm just looking for some wholesome romance that just happily features some wholesome sexual intercourse between the two characters. <laughs> Hashtag read it for the plot. But seriously analyzing the content of the book, the setting, the literacy, and the writing, what this book's asks us to do, it basically tells us to quit and give up, that we can't conquer the void, however you can come to peace with it and accept reality. Surrendering oneself to the void of emptiness is how you beat it. Addiction. That's what the book says at least. You emotionally and mentally fight the craving for it and do whatever you're doing in moderation. But simultaneously, the book also says you don't have to because it's who you are. So you don't have to fight it. So you don't have to accept the void of nothingness because it's human nature to want and fill it until we die because we die. So in quick summary, the book says addictions are okay because it's a part of who we are. We want to maybe be better than what we are, but we can't because it's human nature, so you should just surrender yourself to your addiction or surrender yourself to the void of emptiness and hopefully become better, which is something not really positive. So now I'm specifically talking about Satsuki-san's on the first page of the book that takes place in the future, 
It's explained that she feels shame and fear for what she does and what she's conveniently doing at this particular time, but has a simultaneously emotional catharsis when she does what she does, which is hoeing and whoring herself off, essentially achieving a sense of freedom in what she does. She knows she shouldn't do it, but she does it anyway because of that freedom and the very fact that it fills the void that's with inside her. It's a controlling aspect that she controls within her life and she can regulate, which is then counterintuitive to her real life and setting and the people that surrounds her, which is in complete and total disarray, though overly, what's the word for it? melodramatized with a question mark at the end but adding layers to this the main character is treated like a trash bag and nobody likes her because of course they don't and because school isn't a safe place where you can be yourself because everyone judges you she does what she does out of her own sense of self-pity and insecurities but to add to that burden she's basically the mother in her own home even though her mother is present but because she's such a sucky and crappy mom daughter has to pick up the slack meaning that she's one of those anime protagonists that when you ask them to do something they'll do it solely because they do because they have nothing else better to do but continuing this discussion from a psychological and somewhat philosophical standpoint to mythologize everything i previously said the character then goes on to explain in her secret online diary that's kind of like instagram she only truly exists in this diary that she writes that's giving herself value and validation in a minor way, but a somewhat positive way, making her happy. Until this ugly bastard character tries to clap that ass, and Senpai comes to save the day, and she receives more validation, considering she considered herself as someone invisible to everyone else in the world, and the people she surrounds, which is kind of a dangerous precursor to being a serial killer, considering what comes from this sole event, where she then craves attention, and more importantly, some affection from the person that gave her existence somewhat meaning that blooms into a crazed sex lesbian fantasy and then she finger blasts herself like she's from that anime in solitude where we're least alone which is just a morally irrehensible anime that should have never existed but sasaki-san does this because she has nothing else better to do and is looking to compensate for what she lacks in her real life environment. But to add another layer to this tragedy is presented as a part of a start of some kind of leechism, which is the philosophical literal desire to be struck by a disaster to survive a plane crash for example or to lose everything in a fire solely to gain clarity in oneself and to find purpose or gain some kind of want. And considering the event that happens next and how irrational it is, that is the only logical explanation of why this character does what they do besides bad writing. Thus this manifests directly when the character decides to send nude pictures to the girl that she just met and sends her a diary hoping that they somehow be able to relate to one another if she had this information about who she is, which like I said, isn't a very rational idea and I don't understand why she'd do this. But this is where the story gets crazy with this stupid crazy plot twist that's Chendo L levels of craziness which sends the character spiraling. Basically, the senpai is revealed to be evil because why not? And in addition to this, she live streams videos of people to a secondary dark web version of the diary app where people do naughty things to them themselves because why wouldn't they? But the worst aspect of it all is that she gets paid for doing it. God knows how, but she does. The book doesn't really explain it, but she makes money, and she made money off the main protagonist's misery. And because Sasuke-san gets pissed by this revelation that the senpai that she admired and believed was all too perfect isn't, she decides to expose her as a peeping Tom and a blackmailer, and somehow gets three guys she anonymously met online to, uh, uh, demonetized word her but for lack of a better words let's just say she gets her raviolis ravaged because revenge is a dish best served cold now i haven't read a complicated revenge plot based story since i've read old boy and anna sejuni which withered out in its second half and nozoki no anna or when night falls but i can say for certain those stories are better than this one and this is where everything goes wrong in the story where sasuke son does discovers the original post that she made on Satsuki-san's fake account, which she got control of by hacking into it somehow, even though she hasn't displayed such a skill, to realize that for some reason that doesn't really make sense, magically people can
care about her in this absurdist diary that she writes where she documents the events of her life. But the problem with this is that she begins to post naked photos of herself to gain what she lacks, attention, and finds a home where she's most comfortable being a e-girl. Now, there's nothing wrong with being an e-girl or a cosplay model or a model or an online model or an Instagram model or a Twitter model or a Facebook model or whatever the hell you want to call it. The problem here is that unlike most people who would be doing this profession for income or out of a hobbyist philosophy or some form of entertainment or a way to bolster their career in fashion and design, Satsuki does... what's the word for it? She does what she does for a rather maternal sense in that her need to entertain strangers online becomes something she does to make herself feel more important in a world where she is small. Now, I use the word maternal due to the idea that she does what she does to entertain people out of some sense of self-pity and validation to basically give her validations from her insecurities. However, at the end of the story, what's going to happen is she's doing what she does because she believes people need her to do it in the sense that she believes she was born into this world to do what she does, which is hoeing and whoring. She's a twisted rationalization because of her lack of attention she received in her environment. It doesn't make sense, but it perfectly does. For example, I upload videos to YouTube randomly, sharing my opinions with other people. However, though I do make these videos and get paid to do so, uploading videos to YouTube is not a fundamental need or a prerogative that I need to constantly do in my my life to feel value. In fact, there's a two week gap between this video and my prior video because quite frankly, I upload when I want and I make videos when I want, thus creating a difference between me and Satsuki-san, whereas I upload in moderation, doing them when I can, whenever I feel like being rather lazy. Satsuki does what she does because it's all encompassing and defines who she is as a person, being very unhealthy, whereas I barely edit my videos because I'm too lazy to. And considering the fallen grace of Sasaki's character is that her online persona dominates her actual personality, which is something that commonly happens to bigger YouTubers for some reason. You could say this is a meta-contextual story about people's behaviors online and how that affects who they are in reality. Brought to its extremists, considering what happens next in the story is that Sasaki essentially dissociates from reality, where she considers to people that she talks to people online to be her real friend and she considers real people to be fake people until she meets the real person and it's surprised that this person she talks to online is a real person and just not an icon on someone's profile. But skipping to the part everyone most likely wants to hear and already imagined was going to happen, he sweet talks her, takes her home, claps her cheeks, and ravages her raviolis. And this goes on and on and on and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. This goes on for about 11 to 12 to 15 pages until randomly you get to this page. And listen to me when I say this. I was thinking to myself, Bruh. Did she just get strangled to death? Bruh. Is this the end of the book? Bruh. And apparently it's not, but somehow some people had to read this twice, and luckily I'm not one of them. But running down the remainder of the story or this particular character arc, the character has a complete and mental breakdown when she discovers the dude she's dedicated her entire life to that she conveniently met online that valued her for hoeing and whoring around and ravaging her raviolis. It turns out he's evil, but he's not evil in the sense that he was maniacally evil like the other the girl as he was only doing things with her because he believed this chick was only DTF the entire time. That this wasn't an actual relationship. This was just something that they did because it was easy and it was fun. But Satsuki perceived it as an actual relationship because she's had her dissociative break from reality and of course the cliche psychotic break from reality where she behaves psychotically. When she finds out that the guy was uploading videos of her behind her back because I guess she doesn't check his profile as oftenly as she used to. But the point of this area in the story is that it completes everything I've said and discussed priorly. Satsuki used this website to try to communicate with
communicate with people, but instead of using it for that purpose, because of her fears and insecurities, it became her life and addiction, thus turning into something rather rancid and nasty till it destroyed her life, and that's her fault, and nobody else's because she's brain dead. Not in the sense that she's mentally ill, she's just stupid. And this is brought to its extreme when Satsuki tells the guy that the website is her entire life, and the man responds saying, I'm pretty sure it's not, or well, it shouldn't be. That's just me tacking on that at the end of what he said, which is completely accurate. Then, the character attempts to explain to Satsuki what's fundamentally wrong with her, describing the void within her and the fear of emptiness. She's trying to overcome, but can't because she's not strong-willed enough and pretty much surrendered to her own addictions. Then this escalates to the point where Satsuki tries to have the guy want her by telling him that she loves him, but he doesn't care because he's aware that this is human nature and only saw their relationship as something platonic for when he and her got bored. But in addition to that, it's emotional codependency that drives this character. She does nothing out of love, she does what she does because she likes whoring and hoeing, and this builds up to another psychotic breakdown. To then encounter another character that explains the entire plot again, trying to explain to her what's fundamentally wrong with her, but indeed does try to help her break away from this tendency and addiction that she has. If you the reader just so happily didn't understand the purpose of the story or what the writer was supposed to initially convey, but like I said earlier, we can choose to accept nothingness or choose to ignore it and pretend it's not there with distractions. In this sense, in this particular scenario, this character explains to her her that she should live selfishly and not allow people to give her purpose in life, but she should have people want and need her through her selfish actions, thereby giving herself her own purpose in life. Now, despite how good this piece of advice is to her, of course this character completely misinterprets what this character is trying to tell her, and even though this concept or idea is explained loosely to the character, she goes out and meets another guy and gets her ass cheeks clapped again. But the only difference now is that where she originally was submissive, she has become a dominant sexual partner, which isn't much of an improvement considering she went from e-girl to professional prostitute in the span of a couple chats, then gets completely lost within her own deluded fantasy, where she now believes that if people support her, that gives her to right to exist, thereby giving her existence meaning. Which is something philosophically you shouldn't want, and it's something she accepted, therefore I don't care for her or feel any empathy towards her at all because I don't. So ultimately here at the end, Satsuki simply became a nympho displaying her hypersexuality because she wants to feel like she's alive, which is something I don't agree with, but it's a fictional character, so her wants or need are completely fictional, therefore I don't care. But that's pretty much it. In the next story arc, there is a meta commentary on the app TikTok apparently, but uh... If you ever found yourself in a situation similar to Satsuki-san's, remember... Stop it! Get some help.